One common question that I get about the chain rule is if I'm always needing to uh, multiply by the derivative of what's inside, when do I, when do I stop doing that? Um, and the reason that this co question comes up is because you know people will see something like this, square root of 2x plus 1, and they'll say, well, I need to use the chain rule because there's an inside. So derivative of square root is 1 over 2 square root. And so put the inside of it in there. And then multiply by the derivative of 2x plus 1, which is 2. And then people think, well, now I need to multiply by the, in, the inside of that. And the derivative of 2 is 0. And so this whole thing is 0. Well, no, that's not true. <laughs> that's not what's happening here. So if we so first of all we can stop here so this right here is actually we're done the twos cancel you get one over the square root 2x plus one so what what is it why why is it wrong to keep multiplying by another inside here well it's not wrong it's just that the inside piece here isn't two this isn't the inside it's actually the derivative of the inside right so what is the inside piece? Well, if you look at this function, it's the square root of 2. Uh, right. So if we sort of punch a hole for where the variable is, it's like that. So the layers, the locations of the inside pieces, right? there's one big inside piece like that, and then there's another smaller inside piece right here. So the inside of the inside isn't 2. It's actually just x. And that's always going to happen, right? When you drill down far enough inside of any formula, there's just an x somewhere. And when you do the chain rule, you know you're done when you hit this x. So take the derivative of the outside. It's 1 over 2 square root 2x plus 1. Okay. Now take the, multiply by the derivative of the stuff inside of that. And that's the right this 2. 2 times yellow box plus 1. The derivative of that is 2. Now multiply by the stuff that's in that. But the stuff inside of that is just this yellow box, right? And that's x. And what's the derivative of x? It's 1. And that's how you know you're done. If you're doing the chain rule sort of layer by layer and you hit just a times 1, that's when you know you're done. Okay? Um, and the reason that that makes sense is because there's actually as many layers of parentheses in here as you want. And each layer of parentheses is like another layer of times 1. But having extra times 1s, those don't change anything. So that's how you know it's safe. As soon as you hit this times 1, you know it's safe to stop. It's because if you keep doing the chain rule, you just get times 1 forever and ever, forever after. So. When you get a times 1, that's how you know you're done with the chain rule. So you don't really need that times 1, so back off a layer, and that is, uh, that is your final answer. If you're doing the chain rule and you get a times 0 like this, usually that means you've made a mistake. And you've gone one layer too far, but you've done it incorrectly. Remember, the only function whose derivative should be 0 is a constant, right? So unless, you have a f unless your original function was constant, its derivative shouldn't be 0. <laughs>